Forgive me, but I have to tell you a little something you may not know. Yes, Kathy is the understudy for Sutton Foster. She's also what's known as a swing. Kathy, when she turned up at work at 12 o'clock, could have played any of eight roles. Eight roles. <laughs> the leading lady. <laughs> at 12 noon today, and at one o'clock, she had her very first rehearsal as Marion Any Broadway star will tell you swings are the hardest working and most versatile people in the business. Their role tonight could be totally different come tomorrow. But as they say, the show must go on and swings make it happen. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. That's right, Tamsin. When Hugh Jackman paid tribute to Music Man understudy Kathy Voitko, the video went viral. I sat down with Kathy, Ermi Payton, who moonwalks and stands by as the king of pop in MJ, and longtime Wicked Alphabet standby Jennifer DeNoia to find out more about these pros that make sure the show always goes on. You know, there's been a lot of attention these days on the hardworking standbys and understudies and swings that keep Broadway moving. And the three of you are doing incredible work every week on Broadway, uh, covering some amazing roles. So I'm thrilled to talk to you all about it. Thank yeah. you. Let me just introduce everybody. Now, Jenny, you are the standby for Alphaba in Wicked. You may have heard of it. The green girl. <laughs> yes. You have done this role for a real long time, on and off. In fact, when you look at your Wikipedia page, it's actually kind of hard to follow. I know. All of the different companies. I, I can't really remember. It's all yeah. like meshed together. <laughs> yeah, there's honestly. a lot of green makeup, a lot of Glinda's. Yes, a yeah. lot of Glinda's. And you are actually back at the Gershwin now, covering Alphaba again. Mm -hmm. So welcome back. Thank you. Kathy, you are over at the Winter Garden Theater. You are an understudy for three roles, including Marion, yes. the librarian, yes. Marion Peru. <laughs> and so you're covering a couple pick a littles, and then I cover a couple ensemble people. Yeah, some people. some real crazy character ladies, and then the ingenue. And then uh, they accidentally slapped me on for a ten year old one day, so I just I just do what they ask me to do. And, and, and this is what Broadway <laughs> is like these days. Yes. And you've actually done many many uh, gigs on Broadway as an understudy, as a swing, as a standby. So yes, you have lucky. a lot of experience. Been lucky to be working on the Broadway. Airme. You are welcome to Broadway. Thank you. You, yes. you are a newcomer <laughs> to the Broadway yeah, scene. Yeah. You are at the Neil Simon Theater. You are covering both the roles of MJ mm -hmm. and Michael mm -hmm. in MJ the Musical, which means you're middle and older Michael Jackson. Yes. <laughs> you say that you cover him from age 13 to 33? Yes, yes. So that's the span between the, the middle Michael character is from 13 to about 22, and uh -huh. then the adult Michael is 33. All three of you have such great stories, but you all have this sort of in common, this ability to step in, sometimes at a moment's notice. This has always been a part of this industry and sort of a really unique thing about theater. And I think that it's been interesting in the last, especially the last year, there's really been a huge spotlight on the work you do. Previously, people knew they were understudies. People yep. might have heard of a standby. They rarely heard of a swing. Right. Uh, very fortunately for us in the industry, Hugh Jackman made a big speech. So you, ha you actually had a very big moment because <laughs> you were understudying multiple roles, as we talked about, including Sutton Foster. Early on, when The Music Man started, how, how fourth deep? Fourth preview. For, okay, fourth <laughs> preview. Sutton tested positive yes. and announced it, and you went on with, how, how much rehearsal had you had up to that moment? Maybe two music rehearsals during the rehearsal process, but that was just me and the music director in a room for 45 minutes just going over the music. <laughs> Everything else was self-study, independent study. As a swing, you don't, you're not up there generally with the cast. You're right. sort of doing a lot of homework, taking a lot of notes, and doing a lot of memorizing just with your eyeballs. Yeah. And so uh, I was at a costume fitting at 11 in the morning, and 11.45, the PSM called me and said, uh, you're on for Marion. Wow. And I said, uh, okay. Okay. And he said, what do you want? <laughs> and I said, I'd like to run through the show in order because a lot of times they'll, when you're on it at the last minute, they'll say, okay, we're going to do this big number and we're going to do this big number and let the cast go take a break. But I said, I didn't know the show well enough at that point to do it out of order. And everybody showed up and by, by noon, um, I was at the theater. By one, everybody else was there and we ran through the show and, and then kind of on a spit and a prayer, wow. it, it went well. And Hugh made a ridiculously kind speech at the end of the show and pulled every swing that was on and there were five of 
five swings and or covers on for rolls that night. Fourth preview, that's unheard of, right. but COVID took us out. Yeah. And he brought up the fact that there are swings. And I can't tell you, people who've known me for 20 years said, wait a minute, what's a swing? <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. So I'm thrilled that he just brought the conversation to a national level. Like, oh, these are, we've always been here, but I'm grateful to you that he brought some knowledge to the general public that that exists. And Aramie, you actually, I saw on your Instagram, <laughs> you, because you covered two different eras of Michael Jackson's yeah. life, you act, there was one day, and maybe this has happened more than once, where you actually did, like, I think you did the matinee as the yes. older Michael yeah. and in the evening yeah, as the middle, middle Michael. And it just happened again at like a, about two weeks ago or maybe one week ago this time they checked in they're like is this gonna be okay do you want to just stick to one for the day I'm like no look give me the I like the change up they're very different from each other uh, and the way that they work in the show it's nice to like go into the more ensemble world uh -huh. and then also to bounce back into like okay well I'm driving this show and in the head it's like woo <laughs> which Michael am I you know am I 13 <laughs> or 30 there must be moments also when you're on stage and you're watching other people do the yeah. roles you also know. It seems impossible to figure out how to keep track of all this information. So many things. I often liken it to a chessboard. If you know that this is how the queen moves, then you know that this is how the pawn moves. Wow. So once you know a couple characters in a show, you know, oh, well, I'm gonna see Aramie goes down right at this moment and that's when I know to go left. So it, it's you can't look at it like I'm learning all of these people. You have to look at it like I'm learning two or three, and then the other pieces sort of fall together. Learning the world, how it exists and how it moves with me out of it in any capacity was what helped me, just visualizing it completely and seeing what it does so that if I did have to get thrown in, in a spot, I'm like, oh, I'm used to seeing this picture. Later on, once you've locked in your tracks, you're like, oh, I know that this person's gonna fly by me mm -hmm. right now. Like, and you kind of have that spatial awareness. It's a specific skill set, yeah. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not easy, but it gets easier the more you do it, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jenny, you started in Wicked in Chicago, mm -hmm. I believe, the Chicago sit-down production. You started as... A swing. As a swing, mm -hmm. right. So what, what did that mean? How many crazy um, costumes of the <laughs> denizens of Oz did you have to know how I, to fit into? <laughs> I knew all nine female. Wow ensemble tracks. And I didn't understudy Alphaba or NASA Right, that came time. later. That came later, yeah. So how, how did that sort of transition into knowing the lead role and then eventually getting to cover the lead role and then you got to cover it on Broadway and then do it, you actually, and then you had a full year on Broadway yes, in the role as mm -hmm. well. Well, so I was a swing for about a year and a half in total, but about six months in, we had our understudy who injured themselves and needed to be out of the show for like six or seven weeks. And at that time, there wasn't like a pool of people to call. I auditioned, I became the emergency cover. Yeah, the emer I, actually, emergency. it's so funny when you read the history, your career history, a lot of it talks about being an emergency. Yeah. There's always like a lot of alphabet emergency. emergencies. I'm like the emergency you need an alpha. Is there like a bat phone, like a big green phone in your house that rings? Yeah, I, I am the emergency alphabet. I That's think, amazing. For, or, or I have been for a long time. <laughs> How fast can you get into green? I've gotten ready in seven minutes before. Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, that's not me. That's I mean, that's remarkable. the team. That's the green yeah, team is. making me ready. Ermi, what's it like for you to be a part of Broadway now? And you've, you've been doing a lot of theater yeah. over the, the last few years, yeah, and absolutely. you've been off Broadway, and you've been on the road. Yeah. But being in a Broadway community at this time, what is it like? to um, be a part of the MJ company. It's obviously been a very exciting time for the show as well. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of mixed feelings, right? Because I'm here, so it's something I've been working for for a long, long time. And just to be on Broadway and to be welcomed into the community in uh, such a ferocious way, <laughs> it seems like we're, you know, we're being celebrated heavily and lots of success to the team and everybody that's working on the show. So it's really cool to kind of be uh, thrust into the community and it's it's vivacious it's like a renaissance it feels like and so yeah. um, for me it's really exciting to be a part of a cast that's full of so many black performers and artists it's really nice to see that like reflected across Broadway right now <laughs> so I feel kind of honored to be a part of that and ushering that in and hoping that that's how it continues to be like representative of all kinds of people yeah, yeah it feels special but I'm still like uh. You know, I'm still, I'm still in yeah. pinch me moment. Kathy, when you have a resume like yours, where I feel like you've, 
you're probably kind of known as someone who's really good at this <laughs> within the industry, right? I mean, well, when I, I look at like... The first time I did any standing by was, uh, I stood by for Stephanie Black and the Pirate Queen. Right. And um, I, I just thought that was a really fun job because it was this humongous Blue Leon Schoenberg show and we did it in Chicago for a couple months and we came here for a couple months and I thought that was really fun. At the time though, I was desperately trying to get pregnant and I was like, that'd be great. I'll be an offstage cover and if I have morning sickness, well, I didn't get pregnant during that time. And I, But then I stood by for Mary Maisie and Next to Normal. I just, I found that that didn't stress me out. So standing by never stressed me out. I didn't find that to be, I know I had a girlfriend who said, I can't do it because every single day I, I go, how am I, gonna, how am I gonna do it if I have to go on? And I, and I didn't feel that way. And I was like, oh, maybe this suits me. But yes, I, I've been lucky to do it a lot. Yeah. And then I'll go do a role somewhere. And then I'll say, yes, you need a standby? Absolutely. Mm. Um, so I, I don't know, it's a weird. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought that it, that it might take a unique uh, constitution of a person to actually be able to handle the, do you, do you both feel like you kind of have that as well? Yeah, yeah. I, I always feel just super grateful to be working, especially after the two years yeah. of Of two years of off. nothingness, yeah. yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I'm always learning, especially as a, as a standby or a swing or understudy, um, you're on with different people all the time. So it's, you mm -hmm. have to be so aware mm -hmm. and, and present and I, I just learn something new every time I'm in the show. I like that too, that when you're on, the people who are the regular players, sometimes they dig that too because they're yeah. like, oh, this is a whole and different energy, energy. Yeah. or yeah. you delivered that line mm -hmm. slightly differently and it made me giggle or yeah. whatever. Like it's, it, it, that it's it gratifying like a in a different fire. way yeah. because everyone's sort of on their toes in uh -huh. a different way and it's, it's yeah. fun. I used to always hear people say to me like, don't Broadway performers get bored doing the same thing every night? But I haven't heard that in the last year. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a lot of attention about how different it is every exactly. night. I love that feeling that's kind of lurking, where you like, even if you're just hearing like playback of the show that's happening while it's going on, or you're being able to watch what's going on, you can see the actors on stage, and you're just kind of like aware of if something could happen, or just being like on your toes, but knowing that you know, you kind of have to like jump in and help help. I hate the phrase like save the show or anything like that, I hate but that you, too. you know what I mean. Yeah. But you get to help make sure that things go well, and you get to help keep things intact. And I think that's a it displays like your compassion in a, in a different way. I don't know. For me, I love the community aspect of theater, so it gives me that chance to be like, I'm a part of this community, or I contribute to this community, um, even if it's for this moment. I'm tickled to hear you say that you don't like that phrase either. You know? Yeah. I don't like that because I feel like. My best day at work is if I jump in and somebody who hadn't opened their program doesn't even know that anybody different is in sure, the show. Sure, sure. That's my best day at work. So saving it, it feels like the wrong word. It feels like you just allowed it to be. Yeah. That actually leads me to a question because obviously there's blocking and choreography that you have to follow. But are, do you feel like you're allowed to sort of find your own way into the roles as well? I feel like there is more freedom to do that than maybe historically I used to hear there once was. Do you, do you feel that? I feel like there's like a, I always see it like a box, you know, mm -hmm. and you can kind of move your way through that box, but there's, you know, the structure yeah. of like what the show is and yeah. the story. You have this much wiggle room in the framework they've set out. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But I think, I mean, at least at Wicked, like they encourage us to be in the moment as ourselves uh -huh. through the character, so. Well, and I can tell you that Hugh is an evil, evil person, and he <laughs> likes to tickle you and crack you up on oh stage. Oh my gosh. So he will oftentimes go a little out of the box just for fun. He doesn't want it to fun. be the same every day. No, so it, it keeps you on your toes for sure. <laughs> Forget about whatever actor whose role you're doing that night, but you're also, you're, you're walking in, everyone, walks into Wicked with a certain w idea of what Elphaba sounds like. A lot of it comes from Medina Menzel and a mm -hmm. cast album, or maybe who they've seen in the past. Marion has a very interesting, you know, history that this production kind of breaks against a yes. little bit, right? Makes her, she's a little more fun than she's ever been before. But you act the, you have the extra pressure. <laughs> yeah. Not only Miles Frost, oh, who wow. just won a Tony Award sure, for playing yeah, MJ. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's doing that, he's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. But you also have to nail an icon. <laughs> it's not an impersonation. It's really like you really have to bring out this icon and audiences have to buy that and you don't have 
every night to to nail that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You haven't been doing it every night because it gets easier. I'm sure the, the longer you do it, yeah. that's a crazy amount of pressure. It is. It is. I welcome it. Actually, I don't know what it is. Maybe this is my like you know crazy side popping out, but I think it. It gave me such a large task as an actor to, I love character work, I love uh, like the study of like the actual human. And so for me, uh, as a Michael Jackson fan and then as an actor to come into this thing where I get this really specific, at least it's specific in people's minds, like we all have our specific idea of Michael. Mm -hmm. Having that pressure allowed me to refine my character um, a lot more. When I booked the job, I was excited, but I was like, whew, it's Michael, whoo, okay, you know, but then what I about he? You yeah. know, maybe I didn't do he as well. <laughs> but, you know, to have the pandemic time to really like sit and, and listen to the music even more so than I was already doing yeah. it and to really like start building on my own. So once I step into the room, whether I'm being rehearsed or not, I've already gotten some of those tools in my back pocket. But the task makes me excited. The task is like a big deal, but it's like, I don't know, I feel like it, strengthens me in, in, in some yeah. way, you know? I love that. I so, hope you see it and agree. If you see <laughs> it, then you're like, you don't sound anything like that. <laughs> <laughs>